Welcome to Digital Asset News, the top stories in cryptocurrency and digital assets, and break them down to bite-sized pieces. Today we've got some pretty interesting stuff. First up, the SEC filing shows that BlackRock, with its nine trillion assets under management, held Bitcoin futures contracts worth a measly 6.15 million. That's not the big story. The big story is what uh, executives are saying about gold over there in BlackRock and how it could potentially affect cryptocurrency and digital assets. So we'll take a look at that on top of. I'm going to talk to you today about why I believe that April is not going to be a stellar month for crypto and how May and potentially June is going to be the breakout month and why I think that is. And finally, we'll follow it up with talking about what the heck is going on with Voyager and its price as it crashes to the ground. So we'll take a look at those three stories. But first, let's take a look at what's going on in the market. So today it is uh, April 3rd, uh, 2021. It is uh, high noon uh, here in Puerto Rico. Still here, probably be here until Monday as we close up some dealings and businesses and such. And a uh, pretty great place, I got to tell you. So far, so good. And let's take a look at the market and see what we got. So Bitcoin is uh, up 7% for seven days. Pretty good. Uh, it slipped below the 61,000 mark. Now we're at 59,000. So a little bit of consolidation. So if you're new to the uh, market, just know that that's pretty much how it goes. Uh, a little bit up, a little bit down, sometimes three steps forward, one step back, sometimes 20 steps forward, two steps back. And sometimes <laughs> it's just the exact opposite. But that is cryptocurrency and that is what we have. Uh, Ethereum up 22% for a seven day and 1% for 24 hours. So congratulations to all you Ethereum holders. Looks like it's a pretty good day for you. And we actually talked about this yesterday about how I talked about how uh, Ethereum is actually making good things. Actually, it was uh, really what it comes down to. It's a second layer solution, which is really go doing well for Ethereum. And, uh, and the market responded. So we'll see if this can actually uh, keep up. So congratulations. Binance Coin up 34% for seven days. Again, Binance Coin doing great things as it's taken, really taking away market share from Ethereum as people are starting to uh, trade over there, not start, they've been doing this for quite some time for their decentralized exchange on the Binance Smart Chain. And uh, we'll see if that continues. DOT is uh, pumping massively 31% in seven days. USDT, no one cares. Cardano, eh, down 0.5% as nothing's really going on. And I think that's going to be pretty stagnant for a while. Uh, the Mary Hard Fork already happened, Gogan smart contracts, and they're saying within uh, six months, you're going to be able to do uh, basic smart contracts uh, for uh, basic languages and for programmers. So, I mean, nothing really is going to go on for Cardano for quite some time. Um, I think it'll just be flat, a little bit high, but again, it's been a great year so far. XRP up, you know, so, I mean, everything's up. Let's just, let's just call it what it is. And uh, I think this is looking pretty good. Let's take a look at what we haven't done in a while. And if you notice that uh, I switched back to CoinGecko for, for this uh, episode, usually we use Trade the Chain, but I wanted to go over some things and just take a look at what would happen if you would have uh, just bet, uh, bet on Bitcoin and traded in Bitcoin. Well, on CoinGecko, you can do this. You can, you can change it all over and see what it would be if you just did it in Bitcoin. Well, Bitcoin would be zero, right? But if you were trading Ethereum, you'd be up 13.5% over seven days. If you were done Binance Coin, 24%, DOT, 22%, XRP, 1.7%, Litecoin, nah, 23% for Filecoin, I think great. Wow, Tron, 53%. You would have been up 53% if you would have gone against uh, Bitcoin. 33% for EOS, crazy. <laughs> what? Uh, Solana, 33.2%. I mean, just the list going on. 92% for BitTorrent. Congratulations, BitTorrent holders. My friend George is ecstatic today. <laughs> They're crushing it. 20% OKB, 118% for, for Holochain. Man, that's pretty good. Now let's take a look if we were just going to uh, get into Ethereum. So Ethereum is very hot, right? Uh, doing pretty well. Well, if you would have gone to Binance coin in the last seven days, 10%. Dots, 8%. You would have missed out on a lot of other places. Filecoin, not one of them, 8.5%. Tron, 35%, 17%. If you would have gone against Ethereum, you could have made a killing on EOS. But who who to, who to thunk it, as we say? 69% for BitTorrent and so on and so forth. So again, when you take a look at the markets, just know that there's a lot of opportunities out there and it really depends on what your goals are. Are you a uh, long-term investor? That's pretty much what I do. I just kind of like buy and hold. Are you one of those uh, day traders who likes to get in and out? Or are you like a, uh, you know, a long-term trader? Maybe you, you trade for a little bit, hold for a while, and then let go. Again, everybody's situation is different. So this channel is not financial advice, entertainment purposes only. So uh, whatever your 
whatever your goals are, are, are your goals. I can't wait to tell you what to do. And that's pretty much about it. But that's what's going on in the market. Let's jump into today's top story. And this is, it's, it's great to know that a huge uh, institution such as BlackRock is, first of all, they talked about Bitcoin. Then it's been revealed by the SEC fund that, yes, they actually do hold a little bit of Bitcoin as far as like a futures contract, which isn't really that much. It's not like it's a physical, uh, they're holding Bitcoin, just a futures contract. But it just signals to what it really does for this story to me is it's like everybody who's in traditional finance or who's into stocks and who's into bonds. And you have to understand that I know you think that everybody's into crypto, but guess what? You're dead wrong. Not everybody is like you. Not everybody's like me. One of my fatal flaws, and I always talk about this. I think everybody wants to get into crypto. Uh, we were talking to our real estate agent and uh, smart lady, and I was just trying to explain to her about about cryptocurrency, and it was like talking to a toddler uh, because th that just, people just don't understand. They're like, "Well, yeah, that sounds like like a pretty good stock." I'm like, "It's not a stock." Okay, well, I'll just talk, call my broker. I'm like, "You don't have to call a broker. You can just you can just buy it." Yeah, well, it sounds pretty good because the interest rate. I'm like, there's no interest rates. It's you just buy it. And then you just hold it or you want to trade it, whatever you want to do. So I know, like, again, like you think that I have the same problem. You know, you think that this is the world. We are so early. You have no idea how early we are. Go down the street and ask somebody about Bitcoin. Might know it. Ask somebody about Ethereum. Ask somebody about Binance. Ask somebody about Tomato Coin. Well, I mean, no one's going to know those things. They're just not. Uh, and that's just pretty much how it is. So when I see these types of stories, this is just to me like, like, a sales pitch because people have to see things 7, 10, 15 times before they actually get it. So when you're in traditional finance and you see these, these gods up on Mount Olympus, as you want to call them, I mean, BlackRock is kind of like the pinnacle of the you know financial institutions with their nine trillion asset under management. When you see they're dabbling in it, you're like, maybe I should get into that. And that just kind of moves the goalpost. And it's just a game of inches, just like football. So this is, I think, a pretty good story. And what is going on essentially is that this is that bring it up here. So on March 31st, uh, through its global allocation fund, it held 37 Bitcoin futures contracts with 6.15 million. And this was actually in an SEC filing. Uh, again, on uh, March 26th. And it had already appreciated in value by some 360,000. Uh, but just so you know, these holdings, 37 contracts in total, were about 0.03% of the firm's global allocation fund. So not that much. And that's just how it is. But when you're a publicly traded company, then of course you're going to have to, you know, file with the SEC. And uh, that's it's just how we actually know what's going on. So they're dabbling into it. It signals to other people that, hey, this is, you know, a legitimate type of thing. You should probably get into it. Again, not everybody's like you, not everybody's like me. They don't just get it yet. So they need these types of cues, these types of signals from other traditional players to go, okay, this makes sense. So that's the story in its really entirety. The rest of it's kind of boring. I mean, that's just how it is. But the thing that I that caught my eye was this last piece where it says BlackRock exec, executive Russ Kostrich says gold's ability to hedge against inflation has been somewhat exaggerated. Again, you have to take a look at the clues as to all the different gold bugs, all the different traditional people who are like, hmm, if BlackRock's doing that and that's really smart money, maybe I should listen up. The writer stressed that people are looking for storehouses of value. So if you're into gold, you're really hedging your bet, just like a Jim Cramer always talked about, who is now on the Bitcoin bandwagon. So if you're doing this, you're like, hmm, maybe I should really start to hedge even more because maybe I could have gold and maybe I could have Bitcoin, which totally makes sense to me. I don't know why these uh, crazy gold bugs don't uh, give their followers the right information, but they just don't because they're greedy and uh, I don't want to go into it. But um, I will just say this. If we could capture a small percentage of gold's actual market cap. So this is the thing I always like to talk about, uh, just the market caps by different assets and, and people and uh, industries. So like if you take a look at gold, gold is $11 trillion, probably around $12 trillion right now, uh, the total market cap of gold. Right now, Bitcoin is like 1.1 trillion. The entire cryptocurrency market is only 2 trillion. So if you think that... Uh, what I think would be prudent for these investors is to say, hey, 
maybe instead of going so much into gold, go into something like a Bitcoin and really hedge your bet. Imagine if we hit 50%. Well, that would be $6 trillion in Bitcoin. So that's a 5X right there. So if you're looking at 5X, you're looking at a $300,000 Bitcoin. Because right now we're around 60,000, 5X of that. Let me do some quick math. So about 300,000. Pretty good day. Uh, for the cryptocurrency market. Could that happen? I think it could absolutely happen. And that's just gold. And we're not talking about stock markets, money, not money supply, global debts, global real estate. I think that's the next big one. When they start to tokenize, and they've already done it, and it talks to bringing some information about tokenizing real estate on the blockchain, which is different than, than an REID, uh, real estate investment. Uh, uh, these different types of things where they actually take uh, you know parts of, uh, of the real estate and you can you can purchase it. I'm talking about tokenizing real estate. Imagine that tokenizing real estate is a 280 trillion dollar industry. If you can do something like that and put it in a cryptocurrency in the digital asset market, it would just blow up. So I think that this is uh, one of our hallmark years. I think it's going to be great. So let me know what you think in the comment section. Let's move on to our next piece. I'm going to talk to you about when.